I think that uh, when we speak about a uh, person with spinal injury, <coughs> uh, thinking about the treatment, uh, uh, we have always to think about uh, two categories, complete and incomplete lesion. And the second uh, is, uh, that is, has been, I think, uh, the, the key factor of botulinum toxin, not only for uh, efficacy, that is a reversible treatment. And so I think uh, that this approach uh, is a reversible treatment. Today, one of the problems when we speak with our patients is to propose them something reversible. Generally, you, you propose botulinum toxin and they say, Oh, but uh, they say to me that is a short-time treatment, and I always say this is one of the main advantages that you have, because if uh, uh, in one year, two years, ten years, we have something better, we can uh, use something better for that. This, I think, that is a good approach, and it's a good approach uh, because it's, uh, the, the meantime, I, I have seen that is uh, uh, around seven months eight months in, in this uh, series that you presented of efficacy. Eh? Yeah. And that uh, is, uh, I think today, is, uh, is a good approach. So, I go on uh, with the presentation. <coughs> yes, sure. So, I have one comment yeah. to the presentation from Julia, Rena. Yeah. It was a nice study you presented very well. Uh, it's really interesting to see the difference between the 200 200 because it was not shown in the randomized control study. But you have to point that the Botox is licensed for 200. So you cannot advise people to inject 200 at least at the beginning of the treatment because it's the only license for 200. I have a question to you. I do not understand. Um, it, is a, it is not a selective result to me. I think you destroy also the motor fiber, not only the sensitive yeah. fibers. Yes, uh, we destroy all, all S3 bilateral, sensitive and motor fibers. It's impossible to selective. That's why you have a problem with the sphincter function. Do you have anal incontinence after your treatment? Some patients uh, complain about uh, this incontinence. About anal incontinence, yeah. yeah. A non patient uh, say uh, the erectile dysfunction because before have uh, uh, reflex uh, erectile dysfunction after procedure. They lose have. it. No. They lose it. Okay, thank you. But I have a comment too. Uh, first time that. Uh, 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 you refer about uh, this approach. Uh, I was, uh, I had an enthusiastic, and I tried to do that. Uh, the problem for me has been to understand, uh, as in stimulation, the best parameters, because there are different kind uh, of radio frequency. There is pulsed radio frequency. There is continuous radio frequency. Uh, what about uh, the knowledge of the best parameters uh, that we can use in our patients? It's not well fixed the parameters. We start uh, with uh, use uh, seven degrees centigrade, which uh, this equipment uh, shows of the temperature, and uh, after that we stop it. There is another question. Uh, just a, a few points of information um, and with comment, if I may. Um, first of all, the reason I believe that you have the asymmetry of test uh, of studies between uh, Botox and Dysport is because Allegan patented uh, Botox for, uh, for all urological uses. And so I believe it would be a breach of the um, law to actually just use Dysport without getting permission from them. And I would be interested to know from Allegan what their views are about people who have run into trouble with Botox and may need to switch. I have no idea what their, um, what their position is on that for urologists. The second is in regard to the side effects of botulinum toxin that you mentioned, um, <coughs> and it was a mention about muscle weakness. 
I'm a rehabilitation physician, so I pick up the pieces when people run into complications <coughs> and they don't get to see their urologist. This is in the UK. They don't get to see their urologist from one, uh, if you like, from one significant time interval to the next. Um, but some muscle weakness is to the extent, particularly in MS patients, where they can be knocked right off their legs. And so if uh, one needs to be very careful with that because I've had patients who have come into me and had to spend an enormous amount of time as an inpatient because following a botulinum toxin treatment, they, uh, within a very short time, were unable to walk. And this, I don't know whether this is leakage onto the obturator or whatever, but, um, I mean, people... Uh, suggest that, but I've no, I've no evidence to support what the actual mechanism is. But these are, there are powerful complications to using these things. And the other part, of course, is that people who have disabling neurological conditions, such as multiple sclerosis, um, really don't like spending too much time as a patient because they're not ill. And these are functional issues. So, um, uh, I think we need to put that into context. Okay. Anyway, thank you. Do you want to comment? Well, thank you very much for your comments. Well, for the first one, the, the aim of that workshop was just, I agree with you uh, on, 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 on the sport and Botox. And as uh, Brigitte said, it was important to say that the, the license is 200 units. But uh, for us, uh, the, the important thing was to, see, to just to point out that, in fact, there are very... Uh, all the studies are done maybe on, on Botox and there are very few on this port, but it's interesting too. Yeah, uh, obviously. And uh, for the second part, that was also the aim of the, of, the, uh, of the workshop, is that many people think that, oh, well, I mean, from when I see my residents, I mean, oh, oh, I just have to do Botox injection. Well, pff, that's five minutes and that's it. But the problem, but, uh, that's, that was the aim, I mean, uh, to, to, to have that reaction. That's because sometimes you can have severe reactions, and it's not only macromaturia. Uh, you can have death-threatening situation using Botox or any botulinum toxin, and that's something that you have to keep in mind when you go and do uh, one injection. It's the same when you do it on, uh, also I didn't talk about it, but when patients have a lesion over uh, D6 and you have uh, dysautonomia, uh, I mean, uh, we've seen people having uh, death doing just a urodynamic exam on that, so uh, people also have to note that when you have to do a uh, Botox injection, you're going to have a stimulation of patients, so you can also have complications not linked directly to, to the product, but can be linked to the procedure, which also, even though it's small, it's always a procedure. Okay, I'm curious, Brigitte, uh, uh, how many uh, times you arrive to inject uh, the same uh, person? 